on your schedule this morning? Are you just running around? I mean, I know it's a big day with your album launching yeah. and uh, and all of that. So, so why don't you give me a little bit of window as to you know what happened after you brushed your teeth this morning, or did you forget to brush your teeth? <laughs> I did brush my teeth this morning. Uh, oh, that's yeah. Good. To be honest, um, I had talked to my manager and I was like, "Hey, man." Um, you know, I, I had a gut feeling that there's something going on. And um, I was like, is there something going on? And he was like, oh, I think we got it covered. And then I just got, I was uh, picking up a couch because um, my wife just bought a couch because we just moved to, to Nashville. So, and yeah. I got a text message like 10 minutes before 11 saying, hey, did you remember this? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I thought I'd ask you about this. But anyhow, I'm here. So okay. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, if it makes you feel better, I could say I forgot about this webinar until five minutes ago, and, and then we both be in the same boat. So, uh, no, that? man, <laughs> that's fine. I no, come up with something good. spiritual, been, but <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. We've been looking forward to this for a long time, and uh, ha actually had a number of people register like weeks ago for this. So I guess you know you've got a good following all around there. Not now uh unfortunately not everyone that registered has been able to sign on live, but we are recording this and we're gonna okay, cool. you know put some good promotion behind this. So so the live sense of what we do is just it's very conversational and, and I even sure. get the people who are listening in, they can ask questions, uh, you know, they'll type them and I ask them and stuff like that. So Okay. So we'll just make this kind of you know and to be totally honest, Jeremiah, I you know, haven't I haven't known about the Never Claim until just a couple of weeks ago. So I'm really new. And I was telling oh, wow. Captain, my assistant, she's doing the PowerPoint for me, and I'm like, man, like I don't I don't know much about these guys. And so Natasha sure. says, well, just you know, just make it like you're getting to know them in front of everyone else, because probably there's a lot of other people who are in the same boat. So. Sure. If you're getting yeah. to that, you know, you can get to know me a bit. I'll get to know you. Other people can listen in, and we'll just do that for 45 minutes or so and uh, make a good time of it. So Awesome. So cool, man. just to start, I wanted to say uh, congratulations on, uh, you know, getting to this day. You've been looking forward to this day for a long time, and you must have woke up and gone, man, it's here. Like, like we yeah. are taking it to another level. Hey, yeah. that dream, I was reading in your, your bio on your website this morning about how you had this dream that was totally stepping out in faith into a whole new world, and, yeah. uh, and here it is, like the beginning of something fresh. So why don't we start there and tell me a little bit about, you know, what went into the dream of where you are even just today to think you've got sure. this album. I know you've had a few other recordings, but this one seems to really pick it up a notch. And sure. so take me back to the heavy metal days of, you know, <laughs> drumming, because I thought, man, that's yeah. fascinating. Uh, tell me about that. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll kind of give you a, a shorter version. Um, you know, I was, uh -huh. I've been in a, in a heavy metal, hardcore Christian band for about 10 years, and I've been playing since I was a teenager. And, um, and so we were on tour out in, in London, and uh, when I was out there, I just had this encounter with God, and uh, I'd always been very passionate about uh, worship, leading worship and stuff, um, but I'd always led from the drums. I wasn't a guitar player. And so uh, the Lord just really laid on my heart. Um, I just had this encounter with him where he, he just invited me to be a part of something really big, and... Uh, and amazing, and, and I knew it had to do with worship, and I knew it had to do with seeing uh, revival being poured out all over the world. And so yep. um, I basically, you know, he, in this this encounter I had with them, it was the invitation. He's like, "You want to be a part of this?" And and I said, "Absolutely, Lord!" Like, you know, kind of like here I am, send me kind of a deal. And so um, revival has always been kind of the heartbeat behind our our band, our ministry. Um, not in the hype sense, but like just in that real sense that people would really truly see Jesus for who he is. Yep. And so revival, in my opinion, um, and many other opinions, it always starts with the local church. And so that's where we got started as a band, really. We just started leading worship and doing ministry 
um, through the local church, my, my church being uh, a part of the church movement, the Vineyard, um, and I was serving uh, mm-hmm. in, in Vancouver, Washington. And so um, really just I started to put together, you know, just a group of guys who had, uh, you know, who were skilled at what they did musically, but also were in love with Jesus and who bought into the vision that, that the Lord had given me. And so we slowly started building up a local following and then kind of a regional following. And, you know, kind of over seven years, um, eventually we got invited to do a tour of third day, a couple tours of third day, and then a tour with Newsboys. And that's when we kind of started to get on people's radars and stuff. And so, um, and then uh, Mac Powell introduced us to the Provident people. And uh, they really liked us and really believed in our vision. And so, um, you know, I had a meeting with their president, Terry Hemmings, and afterwards he was like, all right, let's let's figure this out. So, you know, probably uh, nine months later, our record just comes out today. It's been a really amazing, long creative process that's built a lot of patience in us. <laughs> but we're, yeah. we're finally here, and uh, we're excited to see the promises of God fulfilled, you know. Um, we're there's no doubt in my mind that that uh, God's going to do exactly what He intends to do with and you know with our music and through us. Hey, let's take a look at uh, Natasha. If you can just put it to one of the pictures of the band there, one of the next ones. Why don't you introduce us to some of the some of the members of your band yeah. and maybe just tell us a little bit about them and who they are. Sure. And how you got to know them or what their connections to you are? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, totally. So the first guy that to join the band, his name's Matt. He's kind of like the kind of the bigger fella, um, and he originally yeah. played bass. And uh, when I first met him, just through a mutual friend, um, and we met about seven years ago. And he was looking to play like kind of like in a like a worship focused band. So he came along. And then the skinny guy with glasses and dark hair, that's Jared. Um, he's our drummer and we had been a band for about a year without a drummer and I was actually leading from the drums at first um, and I didn't want to leave from the drums but we tried out numerous drummers and couldn't find anybody so one day Matt was like you know what dude I'm just going to check on Craigslist and I said Matt that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard and uh, <laughs> sure enough that same day uh, when he went to check on Craigslist this this kid, Jared, um, from Eastern Oregon, had moved to Portland to play in a band, and he had been looking for a band and couldn't find a band to it, and it was, Craig, this was his last-ditch last, last ditch effort to join a band, and he, the same day he put, he posted that he wanted to be in the band was the day that Matt looked, and we found Jared. So we found Jared on Craigslist, which was amazing. Um, <laughs> it was a, a total hey. fine, and it was an in-your-face kind of moment for Matt to me. Um, and yeah. so, th- so then um, after that, um, the other gentleman, he's kind of got more like blondish hair. His name's Chuck. He grew up with Matt in northern Minnesota, and he's a phenomenal bass player, classically trained, and he moved to Portland playing the band. So Matt eventually started playing guitar, and Chuck came along and started playing bass. And then um, there's an Asian fellow, a Korean fellow, as you notice. Um, that's yeah. Josh. And he came along about three and a half years ago. Our, our old lead guitar player quit, and uh, we played with some uh, other local bands that we were looking for a different guitar player. And so uh, we had played with Josh before and invited him to come. And then he grew up with the last guy with the beanie on, um, and that's, that's <laughs> Mitchell. And uh, Mitchell um, grew up with Josh playing music, and he actually started off as our sound guy. And uh, one day he came to practice, and... Um, he actually kept coming to practice. I didn't know why he was coming to practice. He kept coming to practice, and eventually he just picked up a banjo and started playing. And was like, "You're in." So, <laughs> so I kind of mixed up the, you know, the lineup. We, the lineup we currently have has been about three years now. Yeah, and 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 what's it like? Like, is there a good sense of community and bonding between you guys? I can just imagine, you know, all the time you spend together. And are you with oh, yeah. each other and all your wives and all of that? A lot, or is it a lot of times just the six of you? Okay, it's us. We're on the road. Let's go. And and uh, how does that work? Sure. Well, I one of the top priorities, you know, I, when people were joining the band, I'd cast the vision and I said, you know, before before we're, we're musicians, you know, or even before we're ministers, we have to be brothers. And so, yeah. you know, we've yeah. really fostered we've really fostered a, a community. Um, 
you know, like a brother band of brother type community in our in our in our ministry and our bands. But also, you know, three of us are married, and so yeah, like you know, we've we we try to get together as much as we can to keep communication open with the wives and whatnot. For the most part, most of the traveling is done with just the band. Um, and mm-hmm. so um, I'd say that, you know, I love and respect these guys more than anybody. And they are also some of the, you know, they get under my skin more than anybody else, but that's what a family does, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> yeah. we're the type of people that, you know, you can get an argument with and in the middle of the argument, as you're arguing with them in the back of your head, you say like, you know what? I'm really upset with this person, but I still care for them deeply and I love them. And that's how you know you have a real yeah. relationship. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's what develops that deep sense of community. And I've never been in a, you know, in a traveling band myself, but I, I almost, you know, uh, I love that, that that's one of the prizes you get is you're stuck with a small group of guys. It's almost like you're, you know, you're in a spaceship together and you, yeah. you just have to be together. You know, there's no escaping. Yeah. You have to work it out. And imagine just, you know, how powerful it is to be able to minister in worship out of that, you know, and you're looking at each other yeah. on the stage and knowing the, uh, you know, the depth and genuineness of the place where it all comes from. So, yeah. So yeah. that's neat. I, I, know, I know that that sense of community is very important to you and it's it's part of your ministry out to people but it's got to start with you as a band so tell me about uh the never claim that seems like a pretty interesting band name and uh, i'm sure there's a meaning behind it i don't i'm i'm just trying to think now you know what what is it that you're trying to say with that who came up with that and and what is that the never claim yeah, well, when we started the band, um, you know, when we first started the band, basically the theme came along of, um, you know, once we surrender our lives to Christ, that we don't, we lose the right to claim um, our lives for our own. And so, um, in short, what we tell people is that we never claim God's glory for our own, but it's it's even bigger okay. than that in the sense of, you know, when we go to minister to people, um, you know, one of the things that we say when we show up to places, um, you know, bands, when you show up to places, often God gives you platforms and people come to see you because of the band that you are. But we never want to have the attitude that people are, are here to see us when we play or when we minister, but we're here to see them um, because we've come to serve. And that's first and foremost, um, above anything else. If we're, if we're not serving the people that we're playing and ministering to, um, then it's really all in vain, you know. It's just another rock concert, which we're not really interested in doing. Yeah, that's great. It's a great uh, just not claiming that glory for yourselves and, and having that. Um, I wanted to ask as well about your your sound. Just as I was listening to the sound of your band, you know, the recordings this morning, and uh, just got that real sort of gritty. Uh, 90s kind of rock but powerful you know I can just imagine hundreds or thousands of people hands lifted totally singing out and going you know I just loving this sound is that a is that something that you guys are very intentional about trying to develop your own sound what's your influences uh, you know and identity that you're trying to create yeah well, I think what what's cool and unique about our band is we have six really different diverse, you know, musicians. Like I was saying, Chuck, your bass player, he's classically trained. I come from a you know heavy metal <laughs> background. Of course, I just love really good music, but I love. I've always I grew up listening to like power singers, so like Journey and Celine Dion and Whitney Houston. I grew up listening to all that stuff mm-hmm. with my mom. And, uh, you know, so I've always, vocally, I've always been drawn to that kind of, like, you know, passionate, like Bruce Springsteen, like anything that like, you can feel the passion when people are singing, that's what that's what yeah. I want, that's what kind of music I write. Um, but I, I think sonically, you know, everybody in the band, you know, like Josh, he loves country music. So he, a lot of our stuff, you know, a lot of that twangy sound you hear um, comes from him and, Mitchell's kind of a folky indie rock kid, so you know the banjo fits perfect in his world. And then Matt, the guitar player, he loves 90 rock, so the big crunchy guitars are him. You know, so it's kind of like 
you know, maybe it's maybe it's a little unintentional. Maybe it's kind of by accident that we kind of have the sound that we we kind of just, you know, I, I I'm the primary songwriter, and I usually bring the songs like basically it's, you know, you know, kind of like a bone structure, for example, and then the band, you know, they create the flesh and the makeup and the clothes, and um, you know, whatever we create, it's just something that we all kind of go, wow, wow, we all really like this. This is all something we all really want to listen to. And so that's kind of how we create mm-hmm. our sound, I guess. Hmm. Well, whatever you've got from that collection of, you know, all the different musical backgrounds, and I think there is a real hunger for, you know, at least musically, I would say, you know, in our current era, you know, the people want something that, you know, that has that rootsy, folky, like the, obviously there's a lot of songs coming out now with the banjo in it and things like that. Yeah. And you hear that yeah. sound, it's just like, man, it feels so right, so authentic. And, uh, and, and you guys have really kind of carried and created that, that sound. So it's neat to hear that you have that, you know, you have that unique musical identity that you are creating from your own band of diverse musicians and, you know, what's God put in each of our souls and how can we birth that out into a, a sound that all of us in the end love. So, so that's great. Why don't we take some time and talk through some of the songs on sure. your album. So I'm going to show the lyrics on the screen and, and uh, that you can just have that to sort of reference and talk through some of the lyrics. The, the first song is not a new song, but I thought, you know, we probably shouldn't go into this without talking about that song, Revival. It seems like yeah. that's been a real sort of token, uh, not token, but, um, you know, it's like identified you guys for more than one album. Uh, yeah. It's been yeah. recorded a couple times. So, and then even as you were saying, that the whole theme of Revival kind of carries that theme that you guys carry in your band so so tell us about how this song started and and where it's kind of gone on its journey and how it landed even on this first album um sure uh yeah tell us about that absolutely yeah well um basically you know ever since i came to know jesus i came to know christ when i was 15 years old just to read in the bible so Mm -hmm. i wasn't really raised in like a christian home or anything like that and when I read the Gospels, Jesus, I mean, he revealed himself to me in such a powerful way. I mean, he just wrecked my heart. Like, I mean, I felt so crazy in love with Jesus because when you see him for who he is, like, you can't help but fall in love with him, you know, because of who he is. And um, mm-hmm. so that's been the theme of my life as as a as a early, earlier on in my Christian walk. I used to pray to the Lord, Jesus, if you could only just if there's a curtain that I could pull back to reveal to people to show them who you truly are, not what the world says you are, not what pop culture or even, you know, religious, you know, uh, ideologies say who you are, but who you truly are, the living Christ, you're alive and you're, you're, you're in love with your people. And, um, out of that heart's cry, really, I think the song was born, um, was that that's, that's the ticket to revival. It's, it's a revelation of God's love um, it, that, that really it's what captures people. When people come to know Christ, when they're when when they're changed by Him, they're changed by His love, and um, they're changed by coming into a, a reality of that love, a, a new, deeper understanding, like I did when I was, you know, a teenager. You know, before I had come into that encounter with Jesus, you know, my understanding of Him was kind of like this, you know, religious figure that got mad at me when I did things wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, when I came to know him, it was so far from the truth. You know, it's his patience, his kindness that leads me to repentance and and uh, just how amazing he is and how unique he is. Uh, he's set apart from any other man to ever live on the face of the earth, and he's alive. Mm-hmm. And so that, that was kind of the heart's cry, um, you know, I, I guess that, that came... Um, that kind of created revival, the, the song revival, and just lyrically, um, I wanted it to really reflect what I believe where revival starts, which is a revelation of God's love, and then also just to stir and stir up the church, um, because I believe as soon as you receive Christ, you know the Bible says that God has given us the Holy Spirit as a 
basically a deposit of what's to come. And um, I believe if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the, you know, the, the passion and the desires of Christ, which is to see the nations one to him. And so when we play this song, we see it stirring up in people's hearts, you know, like it's a fresh kind of like, what, what am I feeling? What's this I've never felt before? And it's like, well, we're just speaking to the deep mm. desires that, that are already in your heart because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And so that's kind of the, really the, I guess the weight that that song carries. And I think that's why we've been playing it for mm. so long because um, it's always connected with people and, I guess the label really wanted it. Um, we thought with the last time recording it was going to be on our last record, but the label was like, you know what, this song's really special, and we want to make, give it the platform it's never had before. So we recorded it again, <laughs> and we're excited. Yes, to see what giving it fresh, it. new life. Well, I think it's good, you know, to have a song that that captures the heart of your vision and. You know, who knows? You might do the next album. They'll be like, man, this song, is, it's just getting momentum now. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, no. So I think my fact, band would, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So the next song, One Truth, One Life, this is the, the fresh, new, um, you know, vision that God's given you for this album. And I think this song is going to be heard on the radio around uh, One Truth, One Life, taking a very you know, bold stand, and I guess, and even connecting that to that theme of revival, it all comes down to the one and only Jesus Christ. And it's a, it's a hard message to declare, especially to the world that wants to yeah. kind of go, well, you know, you can have yours and I'll have mine and we'll all, you know, hang out together yeah. in the end. And it's, it's like, that's not the case. But yeah, so tell, yeah. tell me about like that heart behind this song. Yeah, well, this song kind of came out of, a, you know, just a place of, you know, a lot of my friends I grew up with, you know, um, just over the years have either, you know, fell away from the church and become disillusioned with, with their faith and stuff. And so I've had numerous conversations where people have been like, you know what, I just don't know if Jesus is, you know, the only way anymore. I don't want to seem closed-minded and, uh, whenever I hear that, it just passion stirs up inside me um, to the reality that, you know, if they only knew, you know, Jesus, Jesus is the most inclusive person to ever walk the earth. You know, so to be a Christian, right. by definition, you're the most, inc- you should be the most inclusive person, which is far from closed minded. Um, and mm-hmm. unlike any other world religion out there, which calls men to beg God for mercy uh, and plead to God to forgive them, uh, in Christianity, it's the opposite. Jesus comes to us, and he, he's calling us. He's calling us to, to his forgiveness. And so um, yeah. to be closed-minded, yeah, is great. I mean, it's just, it just baffles me when people say that, you know, you know Christianity is so closed-minded. It's like, well, actually, it's the most, it's the most inclusive, you know, faith there is out there. And so that song kind of came out of that place, but just to boldly declare that, because I've seen that, that, that um, ideology creeping into the church where people – you know, they feel pressured, like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to offend anybody. It's just like, hey, man, like, Jesus made it very clear, like, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to me. Um, no one goes to the Father except through me. And so um, it's just a declaration I just feel like is really relevant for the church today uh, in a culture that I think is becoming yeah. increasingly um, just jaded with that, with that theme. Hmm. Hmm. So, so I'm just thinking, as you know about praise charts, you know, we're all about delivering worship music uh, arrangements, charts, things that help congregations uh, sing. And I know a lot of your music is, is worship-oriented, but uh, just we can skip around to some different songs. I just want you to think about, is there a song, you know, other than the ones we've talked about, that you just find this is the song where people just you know, enter into the presence of God and sing with all yeah. their hearts, hands raised, yep. that kind of thing. What's the song that comes to mind from this album here when I when I say that? What's the song sure. for the church to sing? Um, you know, you if say? I can just do two really quick, because there's two that I think okay. are like in competition with each other. <laughs> just from our personal experience. One is Mighty yeah. Jesus. Um, that song okay. is... Okay, well, just, let's talk about Mighty Jesus yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that song, um, I think, you know, it's just blowing up everywhere we go as far as just people. I mean, when we play it by the second time we get into the chorus, I mean, that's one of those songs where every hand's raised and people are just singing it yeah. as loud as they can. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, I think, I think where that comes from is obviously – the lyrical content, you know, it speaks of the truth of who Jesus is. He's the rock of salvation. And, you know, upon, you know, nobody else, you know, when we stand, like nothing else is solid, you know, like like the foundation of Christ. But I wrote that song out of a very, um, you know, not dark place, but just a very uh, trying place in my life. I was going through uh, a season of, um, extreme anxiety. I'd gotten um, the flu really bad, and then I got pneumonia afterwards, and I, I got to a place I had to be hospitalized, and I thought, at mm. one point, I thought I was going to die because I had a, like a, a fever of like 106 or so, and um, wow. and I was in my, I wasn't in my right mind like when that was happening, so I started that, you know, I had a, basically like a nervous breakdown, and then developed a panic disorder, you know, subsequently after that, and uh, it wasn't anything I asked for, uh, it wasn't anything I asked for. It wasn't like, you know, dear God, please, you know, give me these trials. <laughs> it's just kind of something yeah. that came right after, you know, right after uh, right after my daughter was born. Like, I wasn't, like, in habitual sin. Like, I, you know, like, yeah. sometimes we, we, um, we kind of relate, like, our trials with, like, you know, well, is he in the word enough? Like, yeah, like, I spend time in God's presence yeah. every day. You know, but so why yeah. am I going through this? Why am I feeling this way? Yeah. God, I feel like you're not near. But in the midst of that feeling, a, a cry began to rise up inside of me. You know, mighty Jesus, rock of salvation. You know, when all else is shifting sand, it's on you alone I stand. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what I'm going through. There's mm-hmm. been, Paul was in prison, beaten, flogged, chained, and and with with his, you know, friends singing praises and hymns to the Lord, you know, like, it's not about how we feel, it's about what we know, and I know that Jesus is the truth, and um, yeah. obviously there's, you know, I've had the best feelings in the world in God's presence, but sometimes it's not all, you know, butterflies and, you know, candy corn, you know what I mean, it's like, sometimes, yeah. you know, you're you're going through the hard stuff and you don't know why, and uh, yeah. this song really has got me through that hard season, you know, I've really mm-hmm. found a lot of healing through that, obviously through the local church, you know, counseling. Um, and what we found is when we play this song, so many people, and I share the story, so many people are like, you know, like, thank you for giving me permission to go yeah. through this without feeling like yeah. guilt or shame. Because a lot of people believe that because you're a follower of Christ, like, you know, you shouldn't, you're never going to deal with depression or, or anxiety, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's just not the case sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Jeremiah, I was just thinking over the last year or two, I've done quite a number of these interviews with worship leaders, and, you know, some of the great classics like, you know, Darlene Jack and Paul Bawash and other people like that, and time and time again, I find that when we get talking and they start, you know, sharing about some of that reality, some of the pain and, you know, trial that they all go through, it's like it breaks down walls as people are listening and and um you know and it's not like like god you know makes that happen to you to teach you a lesson or whatever but it just happens whatever it is it doesn't mean you're a bad person but boy it makes you real and uh you know and i just think i've got all those stories in my my own life where in the moment i was like why is this happening (laughs) You know, I yeah. don't deserve this, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, on the other side of it, you're like, if I didn't have that, um, yeah. you know, my story would just lack that sense of, uh, I don't know, depth and reality. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I really appreciate you saying that, you know, I faced all this fears, anxiety and all that, and I was in the word and I was praying and it's not that I was in sin. It's just welcome yeah. to reality. And sometimes things happen <laughs> yeah. that we can't expect or explain. And especially, you know, I mean, I ha- I speak from a worship leader, worship pastor's perspective, and I remember those weeks where, 
you know, it's like Saturday night. Could Saturday night or even Sunday morning be that the worst time, some destruction, you know, where I, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, things fall apart. And, and we all experience that. I'm sure any worship pastor yeah. listening in, you know, is like, that totally happens to me. And I almost thought I was the <laughs> only one. But we need to tell each other, you know, you're not the only one. And go yeah. up. Lead worship with confidence, with boldness. Don't try and hide your pain. And yeah. um, anyways, I just kind of sense that you're another guy to just, you know, you don't have to hide that because we need to hear it. I need to hear that. There's another guy yeah. that, you know, you know, he's a son uh, of God. I mean, you know, a brother of Christ kind of thing. You're in the family and, yeah. and God's called you. And uh, you're working through it, you know. We're we're yeah. kind of looking through a glass dimly, kind of thing, right? We're not there yeah. yet. But, <laughs> so, yep. anyways, good word, good word, and uh, I'm there with you there. So, so okay. So, what's the next song? There's there's another one, and sure. I think I know what it is, but I'll let you say it, and I'll tell you. Okay. I think the same. All one. right. The next the next song that's really been connecting is a song called "Be Lifted Higher." Um, yeah, I don't that know if that's the one you're thinking. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, I was yeah. I was listening this morning, and I could see it. I could see all the hands lifted. So, um, so yeah. very far. Yeah. So that song actually, you know, was a song that um, I had written probably about a year ago, and then um, when I started, I got the chance to work with some amazing other really great songwriters like Jason Ingram. Um, Mm -hmm. a guy named Chef Butler. Um, But basically, like, that was one of the songs that we kind of were like, you know what, let's... Obviously, the theme of the song is so, you know, powerful. You know, the greatest... I I believe that's one of my favorite names, you know, uh, know, or names of... Not not necessarily the names of Christ, but just identifying Christ as as the King of Kings, you know? Um, And so... When we got together um, in writing this song, we just wanted to make something like, usually, I mean, I'm really, I naturally default to like anthem type songs, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. stuff you want to pump your fist up in the air and sing. And so um, together, you know, I think this is a really good example of artistically what I believe the church, um, what Paul talks about the church is in Ephesians where everybody, everybody kind of brings their gift or their, you know, portion of of their gifting to the table, and out of it, you recreated something that I think is just really beautiful and powerful. Um, and so mm-hmm. this, song's, this song's really been connecting with people. I think it's just one of those real, uh, you know, thematically, it's nothing original, but just sonically, um, I think it just adds energy and excitement to the theme of Christ as King of Kings. Mhm. Hmm. Must be so awesome. I mean, it is awesome when you are leading a song like that that's come out of your heart, and to experience that with, you know, hundreds or thousands of people just joining in, and that same heart, that same voice, and it's, you know, I love that. So much of this is so very Christ-centered. You know, right from revival to that to that uh, one truth, one life, be lifted higher, uh, you know, mighty Jesus. It's, there, there's a theological, you know, very defined focus on a person. And then yeah. out of that stems, um, you know, it's like, it's a foundation on which you can really declare worship. Yeah. So um, it's great. So um, in your in your music, do you have this kind of, uh, we've been talking a little bit about the the very worship congregational songs. Are there some other songs that are more like you just singing over people? If you, you know, I, yeah. mean, I hate to call it performance, but and, and yeah. let's just talk a little bit about what those songs are and how you kind of work and move through, um, you know, the phases of of, of worship. And, yeah. you know, like the concert thing, and it's all worship, but yeah. sometimes people are singing. What What yeah. is that yep. uh, for you? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've, um, 
I've been asked, and this, I know this isn't the question you're asking, but I'll bring it up because I think it relates. You know, people have asked okay. me before, like, what's, what's the, um, where does performance end and worship begin? And yeah, what I tell people, yeah, and what I tell people is, well, worship begins at the performance. Um, it's about who you're performing for, and I'm performing for my Savior, and so, therefore, it's worship. And performance yeah. and entertainment and all those things, to me, are just tools in my tool belt to get people to let down their guards so the Holy Spirit can come in and do his ministry. And um, before we're uh, a Christian entertainment band, before we're even a worship band, we are a ministry band. And unless we go to a place and minister the presence of God, um, we're not really doing our job. And so I find, I find that having that sort of mentality allows us to have thematically songs that are more prophetic by nature or more proclamation over people, um, which people, like a song for a revi- like Revival, for example, you know, it's, it's more of a proclamation, but people worship their guts out to it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And then a song, and then a song like we have a song on the record called "Still Their Hearts," um, which is a song that I wrote out of a prayer that um, I pray over my little girls. I have two daughters, a seven-year-old and a one-year-old. I pray over them every night, and that's the prayer. That, the song is the prayer I pray, but just put into yeah. music. <laughs> and so, um, when people hear that, you know, especially parents or even people that don't have children that have a longing to see their friends come to Christ you know, that ministers to them, and it stirs them up to to want to see, yeah. you know, Christ glorified. And so what we find, there's this really kind of this ebb and flow with our with our, yeah. uh, with our our live performances. One moment people are, you know, they're worshiping, and another moment they're, they're, they're being still and listening. Um, and then by the end, usually by, you know, by the end of all of our performances, especially if it's something that we're in charge of, Sometimes, like, when we're on tour and stuff, like, we're not really in charge of the format and whatnot. But if it's something that we're leading and we're in charge of, there's always ministry. There's always prayer ministry. Um, I do a lot of, you know, I love to do, like, a lot of encouraging and prophetic ministry and stuff like that as well. And so it's kind of in our DNA, and um, that's kind of what we do when we go to places. We've heard people say that, um, you know, I mean, some of the greatest compliments we've gotten was, uh, you know, we had a blast because you led us into worship as opposed to, yeah. you know, that was wholesome entertainment, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's great. But, um, but we, you know, we're just, we're built differently and that's kind of our call is to uh, minister the presence of God wherever we go. Yeah. And truly, you know, worship, there, there's so many ways to worship. You don't necessarily have to be all singing to worship. You could be listening. Yeah. You can be yeah. engaging. You know, being ministered to. Uh, it's almost like yeah. it's the wrong question to ask. Is this a performance song now, or is it a worship song? It actually. Yeah. It seems like what I hear you saying is, you know, it starts with like the heart of the guy who's leading it, and you know, yeah. what's your and and the whole package together, and maybe even the churches. We need to step outside of that question of, you know, does everybody have to sing every song? Is it okay if we sing yeah. a song and people are just listening? Is that then yeah. not worship? It, I don't yeah. think it's the right question, you know. It can yeah. uh, I mean, I almost I, I want to just remind people that just because you're singing doesn't mean you're worshiping, you know. Worship is yeah. even <laughs> defined by music, much less whether I'm listening or participating in, and uh, you know, there's, there's a whole other layer that we have to lay down and and then you know you have the freedom to express yourself as a band and if you've got a song to declare over people do it right with boldness and and so so what are like just looking at some of the other songs that we we have i mean we've talked about quite a quite a few but there's pearl of great price my soul things are some of those um like, how do those kind of fit into your yeah. your um, ebb and flow, as you called it? Yeah. So well, yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't really get to talk a lot about My Soul Longs. Um, that song has been definitely a, a, a crowd favorite that we that we play just because it's such a cel- you know, celebratory song. It's you know, singing and yeah. proclaiming, you know, that Christ is coming back for his bride. 
And um, that's, that's just a really fun one. That's one actually that um, CCLI TV just picked up, and they're, they're really pushing that to churches right now. Um, so it just, it's a really good upbeat song for people to sing. You know, it's a fairly easy song to play. It's basically in the key of D mm-hmm. and stays in that range <laughs> like the whole time. Um, <laughs> but uh, so that one, and then Pearly Great Prices, just like uh, Be Lifted Higher, is just another one of those anthemic declarations, you know. Um, Pearly Great Price, you know, mm-hmm. the, the lyrics are, Jesus, treasure of life, you are the Pearl of Great Price. Matchless, nothing compares to your perfect sacrifice. Or Pearl of Great Price. And that's just one of my favorite um, stories in the Bible about the the, the man who sold everything. Um, the wife, Yeah, the man who sold everything to attain the Pearl of Great Price. I mean, it's there's nobody else worth surrendering all that we are um, to attain mm-hmm. Jesus. And so... Um, so that one's really just really been uh, touching people's hearts. And, there, and then there's some other songs in there I think that are more personal to me um, that I think minister to people as well. But as a whole, the wor- I mean, I think it would be fair to say that this, this, this record is a worship record um, that we know yeah. will hopefully not only um, hopefully minister to, to the church, but also outside of the church. Um, something that people can relate definitely in the church, but also just people that maybe are even outside of the church who are going through hard times can go, you know, mm-hmm. like, wow, like this relates to me and it's okay to be in this situation because um, these guys love Jesus and they're going through it. Um, and you yeah. know, my, maybe that will bring people to Christ, you know? Yeah. Hey, we've got uh, people who are listening in who, who've got some questions. So are you ready to take it from the floor now? You know, this could get pretty random and, and sometimes sure, personal, yeah. but, you know, I just, I just read it as it, you know, as they, they deliver it to me. So, no, we honestly, we, we look through the questions, but there's some good ones here that I want to ask. So um, Eric is saying, asking, what's the biggest change for you since moving to Nashville? The biggest change for us, uh, well, the weather's better. <laughs> so far, there you um, go. but I, I'd say that um, kind of. I mean, just for me, just as a as a father, um, it's been it's been a little challenging. We have a seven year old daughter, and all of her friends and family are at home, and she's trying to adjust yeah. to you know a new city and making new friends. And as a father, you you know loves his daughter with all that he is. You know, it's hard yeah. um, to kind of go through that yeah. transition, but. She's learning some really cool lessons about the Lord in it too, about transition and trusting in the Lord and following Him despite how hard it may seem. And so she's uh, mm-hmm. she's actually coming around, and God's doing some good stuff through that in her, and that's really exciting as a father to see, you know. But yeah, that's probably the yeah. biggest you know, the biggest shifting. Like, oh, you know, it's kind of on my heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, another person, Al, uh, was asking about you serving in a local church. So did you guys have to kind of, I guess you were probably quite planted in a church in your, yeah. you know, where you used to live, and you had to, have you found a new place to sort of sink into? Um, and where yeah. are you? How is that going for you? Yeah, well, basically, um, I've been a part of this vineyard movement for a long time, mm-hmm. for most of my church life. And so I served as the youth pastor at my church for about uh, 10 years. And so I was really plugged in that church. I wasn't actually the worship guy there. I was just on rotation. Um, and I had an amazing pastor named Ron Burnett. Um, but I also serve on a national level with the Vineyard, uh, with a youth task force. And my wife and I put on youth and young adult conferences all over the, the, the country um, called Cultivation Generation. <laughs> And so um, we're still heavily involved in, in all of that stuff. And so there's a vineyard here um, in Franklin, Tennessee, that my wife and I are going to now. So the rest of the guys, some of them are part of the vineyard. Some of them have gone to other churches. But um, every single one of us have always, you know, served, you know, in some capacity at our churches, whether that's you know, being a musician on the worship team or, for me, you know, pastoral ministry. Um, and that's definitely still you know, a value that we have as a band Um, coming into Nashville, trying to find, trying to, you know, some of the guys trying to plug into churches in different places and seeing where the need is and balancing obviously that with uh, the ministry that God's calling us out in. 
Um, but it goes without saying that the local church, you know, without being plugged into the local church, we might as well just quit as a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need it desperately. Yeah. You know, it's it's the body it's the body of Christ, man. It's the bride and um hmm. we cherish it. We love it with all that we are and um we're gonna continue to hopefully be uh you know, uh, not only uh, a ministry that ministers to the body of Christ but um, so many people that actually are incorporated within, you know, getting ministered to by the body. Yeah. You know, speaking of, you used the, ter- the, the term ministry, and one of the um, guys, Al, was asking, you use the word ministry a lot. What's your definition of ministry? So, like, when you were talking about that ministry time in your concerts or, or all of that, how do yeah. you... What defines that for you? Yeah, well, ministry, to me, ministry time, um, I would say is defined um, by uh, different members of the body of Christ using their gifts to build and encourage and see healing brought and and all that kind of stuff brought to a fellow member of, of the body. You know, the Bible says, mm-hmm. you know, when you're, your brother rejoices, rejoice with him. When he weeps, weep with him. That to me, that's that's ministry. You know, um, God has yes. deposited His Holy Spirit into us, and He's given us gifts. Um, the gifts weren't given to us like Jesus wasn't like, here's your gift. Um, Jesus was like, here's your tool. Now make it a gift for other people. And so, yeah. um, I believe that when when we allow ourselves to um, go outside of just uh, just a concert, because that's what happens sometimes in Christian music. Like people can come to like a concert, and no one really gets ministered to because you don't give them the time right. to talk. You don't give them the time to connect with you. And you know, when we're on these tours and stuff, like we're on the tour right now, Saint this real. You know, I'm always looking for people to pray for. You know, and I get to pray for people every yeah. single night. It's, it's amazing because yeah. um, you know people allow you to do that because they saw you on stage, and so they. For some reason, they give you credibility, and they come up and they spill their guts, and it's like, this is why we're here. And then you pray for them, and you hopefully see, you know, healing, you know, or or life mm-hmm. change. And uh, we see a lot of that. Mm-hmm. So that that to me is ministry. You know, that's that's ministering yeah. the presence of God. It's you know, uh, bringing hope to hopeless situations. It's bringing healing to brokenness. It's bringing love to people who feel unloved. Mm. It's beautiful. It's good. Good stuff. Hey, we're coming to the end of our hour, and the, one of the last questions that uh, one of our listeners asked, which is very appropriate, Eric is just saying, how can we pray for you? So I'll tell you how I'd like to end our time together is, um, first I'd like you to tell us how we can pray for you, and then I'd like to pray for you. And then I'd like you to pray for me and the rest of us who are listening in, and worship leaders and worship pastors and others that will listen to this in uh, the weeks and months ahead just give you a chance to minister, you know, that presence of God over to us. So, yeah. but, um, but in just in particular, what would be something that those of us listening to you now can, can pray for you for? Yeah, well, I'd but say... Current, yeah. Yeah, currently I'd say one good thing would be great to pray for just over us. And it's just the really, you know, real side of me. You know, our our new album just came out, so I'm pretty anxious today. <laughs> it's, not a, yeah. it's not a good yeah. thing. Um, and so, of course, there's all those, it's always those fleshly sides of like, is this going to be successful? Or And really at the end yeah. of the day, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it glorifies the Lord. Of course we want it to be successful, but it's not really about that. Yeah. So, um, and I'd say as a band, just, you know, we're on the road right now and um, just with the move and everything, you know, just prayer for God's Holy Spirit just to keep us, you know, checking our hearts and drawing us back to his yeah. presence because that's 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 what we need more than anything is more of God's presence. And so that's yeah. love, love, love. And then, of course, right. I, I always ask this, that wherever, you know, pray for the ministry that we do, that wherever we go, there'd be increased amounts of God's presence and ministry so that would take place. Um, and so yeah. that, that's the only other thing. Yeah. Well, those of you who are listening in, and thank you, Eric, for asking that question. And and so I'd like to pray for you. And when I'm finished, then I'm just going to invite you to continue that conversation and and mm-hmm. pray for us. And, and we'll close out that way. And, 
And uh, so let's just go to the Lord. Thanks, God, for this time that uh, I can have with Jeremiah and many others who are listening in. And we all kind of share that common heart and uh, desire to, to minister and learn how to minister and, uh, and learn about what it means to be um, broken and, and press on through you know, some of the things that we suffer and trials that we experience and anxieties or fears or all of those things that are part of this human condition that we're in a battle that we wage. And, uh, and as Jeremiah has been kind of vulnerable with us uh, today, just exposing some of those softer sides to him, I thank you for that. Thank you for his humility. And most of all, thanks for the, the call and the dream and the vision that you deposited into his heart when he was, in particular, you know, when he was that heavy metal drummer eight or ten years ago and he saw the future of his life and where it could go and what he could do and he stepped out in faith and uh, and he's been faithful and I'm just praying that your will would be unfolded in Jeremiah's life and their whole band that, that um, you know, the times of ministry would be rich. The times of worship would just be powerful and anthemic and people would just raise hands and he would look out and just know that, you know, if he sells one album or a hundred or a thousand today, this is worth it, you know, because he's ministering to people. So just, just really declare that confidence into him today. I can only imagine how how it would feel to be on that day of releasing the album and wondering, you know, are enough people going to like this? But um, you're just saying, you know, to Jeremiah, well done, my good and faithful servant, you know, that he is pleased with Jeremiah. And with Matthew and Chuck and Jared and Josh and Mitchell, who are on the band in that community together, thank you, God, that they are your faithful servants and ministers and and uh and just give them great joy as they continue on their tour today and i pray for um jeremiah's wife and his daughter in particular as they're adjusting to nashville and connecting with friends i pray for friends for his daughter that just makes her feel like i'm so glad i'm here because you know how would i have met these new friends and and people that can speak um, you know, the truth into her life. And thanks for uh, Jeremiah's father heart, too, and uh, that that is part of his worship. And it comes out. So I pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Lord. And Jesus, I just want to pray for my brothers and sisters, God, who um, have surrendered their life to you for the cause of your people, God, for the sake of your church. And Jesus, I just pray right now, any any uh, one of your children, God, who are um, just going through the daily grind, Father, um, just trying to be uh, the best that they can be for your kingdom and glory, that you would come right now and bring um, your spirit of peace over them, God, but also just um, just just greater an increasing vision, Father, for the things that you, you want to accomplish in and through their lives because, um, God, we know that it's not by our strength, it's by, it's by what you want to do. And you've chosen us, God, to lead people into your presence. And we don't take that lightly, God. And so we just pray right now, Holy Spirit, let your peace come rest over your children. God, um, glorify yourself and um, just bring increasing amounts of your, your presence to the churches that are, that are represented here today, Lord God, that your name would be lifted up above every other name in this in this world, God, and we would see um, more and more people come to know you for who you are in and through us, God. So just come now, Holy Spirit, and do your amazing work that only you can do and minister and bless those who uh, desperately need you, God, and that would be all of us because we desperately need you. <laughs> so I say we thank you. Lord, and we thank you for this ministry, God, and we say just bless it and increase uh, the influence that this ministry has. And we say we love you. Bless your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeremiah. And I just want to let you know we're going to do all we can to give you 
that little bit of a boost today. And as the week unfolds, we've got the charts and we're streaming your audio and Facebooking and Twittering and all that kind of stuff. So, so um, we've got lots of worship leaders and pastors who every week they're coming to praise charts looking for something fresh and new and, awesome. and new sounds, new rhythms, new words, new ways to bring you know, this to their churches. So I hope that that can help a little bit. And, uh, you know, God's blessings to you as you continue your your tour. So thank you we for sure the time. We sure appreciate you, you guys. Appreciate you guys yeah. big time. Thanks for your prayers. Okay. Thanks very much. I'll let you go. Have a great day. All right? Okay. God bless. Bye. Bye then. All right. Okay. So that was a great...